few pieces of media on this planet that I'm adamant people have to watch. Burn Notice is one of them. It's one of the best shows made in the 2000s, and one that doesn't really ever get an ounce of credit it deserves. I mean, this is a spy espionage drama of the level of a show like 24. You shut your fat stupid mouth! Yeah, I said it, 24. Don't you ever come into my office and talk to me like that again, do you understand me? If you're worried about Jack Bauer comparisons, be prepared for some fighting words. All right, so what is Burn Notice? Allow me to introduce myself, my name is Burn Notice is a spy espionage drama that debuted on the USA Network in June of 2007. It ran seven seasons, spanning 111 episodes, and it even included a TV movie. The show follows Michael Weston, a former U.S. Army Ranger and CIA contractor who was burned, played by Jeffrey Donovan. Being burned in spy terms effectively means forcibly fired, but the government ceases your belongings, ditches you in some corner of the world, and the protection they once provided you ceases. Michael is relocated to Miami, his former home where he receives help from his ex-girlfriend, a former IRA operative played by Gabrielle Anwar, and his old friend, Sam Axe, a retired Navy SEAL played by the infamous Bruce Campbell. It's official. The guy's a dick. Burn Notice, created by Matt Nix, follows USA Network's mold in the mid-2000s of complicated good guys doing good things. Its hybrid storytelling weaves in and out of being a procedural mixed with long arcing plot lines. Each episode, Michael and his friends have to solve a case. The case can be anything from human trafficking, an old lady next door needs help from a scam. You get the point. This all happens while plot B, or the season-long plot, happens concurrently. Thanks to fantastic writing, the storylines usually interweave, constantly giving the ensemble cast things to do. At the heart of Burn Notice is Michael Weston. Michael's a complicated character, but one that is multi-layered, multifaceted, and just plain cool. I'd say 24 hours is enough time. Do I look like I need more? <laughs> we just have one little thing to close the loop. No, do not kill me. Look, I know we messed up. That was unfortunate. Andre, let Virgil go. Andre, let Virgil go. I'm gonna find you, boy, and I'm gonna kill you. I know, I know, and then you'll cut my throat. I know, I know. Let him go. Michael is a renowned spy. In loose terms, imagine a spy version of like John Wick, perhaps just a tad more realistic. Those that encounter Michael don't believe he's real, and some even think it's a covert name for a team of spies. Special operations team. They think one person cannot make so much problems. Nope. Just me. So can't figure you out, man. Honestly, Omar. Don't try. He's like the boogeyman, not me. I don't know about that. This is only aided by Michael's incredible talents in the field. He's essentially a walking con man capable of selling any cover story. He's played Russians, Hicks, losers. Again, you get the picture. I'm Father Peter, our Lady of Grace Church. No, that's Quinn. That's not, that's not that's Pete. But then I use one of them. I saw him kill. Thanks in part to Jeffrey Donovan's range, he can essentially play any character without a hitch. Michael's a man out for vengeance, but at his heart, he's a guy that just wants to do the right thing. Michael will often go up against mobsters, murderers, rapists, kidnappers, drug traffickers, war criminals. You get the picture again. Odds are stacked against him, but Michael, again with the great ensemble cast, usually prevail. Michael's team is great and add different elements that Michael can't. Fiona, Michael's on and off again girlfriend, is a fiery, passionate woman. She's beautiful but menacing, and that often works to their advantage. Sam, the former Navy SEAL, played so well by Bruce Campbell, is a womanizing alcoholic with a heart of gold. You feel like having a beer? Sam X. You're living well off a government pension, I see. Not that good. This is iced tea. Sometimes he can be just as good of a con man as Michael. Bruce's comedic timing and charisma sell Sam as the picture-perfect best friend. Michael's character is complex because, despite his renowned prowess as a spy extraordinaire, he fails. Michael, Sam, and Fiona will often have great plans, but will fall through, sometimes spectacularly. It's the recovery, sometimes that are completely out of nowhere, but entirely plausible that you realize, wow, this guy is really something special. Perhaps even more interesting is his inability to really gauge his own personal life. Whether it be his family and the abuse he took from his alcoholic father or his love life with Fiona, it's so fascinating to see a man unravel massive operations but struggle to have a simple conversation with his mom or to develop a relationship with his own brother. I just, you know, no, don't talk like that. You're not good at it. And that's not to say Burn Notice is a constant annoyance of family dilemmas. 
That wouldn't do justice to the hard work that Matt Nix, this talented cast, and those behind the cameras do. This is one of the best action shows on television, including Now and Then. Sure, shows like Game of Thrones with the massive double-digit multi-million dollar budgets will smoke burn notice. However, a lot of work, work in camera with actual stuntmen, cars blowing up, etc. is quite impressive. The show is also ridiculously witty and is capable of getting a good belly laugh out of you once in a while. If I lose my pinch you're going to be changing my diapers when I'm 95 and drooling. Sam, I would never let that happen. I'd smother you with a pillow for <laughs> Burn Notice is an incredibly easy show to drop in and out of. However, if I was to point out one episode in particular as a selling point to the audience, it might be the episode Bad Breaks in Season 2. In the episode, Michael is struggling to shake off FBI agent Bly from his tail. During all that, he decides to help a family friend with a stalker. Come to find out, the stalker is using the family friend, a bank manager, to rob the bank. Michael and Agent Bly, who is still riding the tails of Michael, gets trapped in a lethal hostage situation inside the bank. The setup is really simple, but again, watching Michael's ingenuity as he figures out a way to save all the hostages and foil the robber's plan is a stroke of absolute genius. Not only does he save the day, but in the process earns the respect of Asian Bly who backs off of him. It's an extremely rewarding and satisfying episode that perfectly illustrates why this show is just so damn good. This bank is cursed. That's it, isn't it? Another area where Burnos is different, not only in procedurals but action drama, is the noir narration. It can be off-putting to some, especially in the pilot episode, but eventually works in benefit of the show. My name is Michael Weston. I used to be a spy until... Michael narrates each episode almost like a field orientation for trainees as he breaks down exactly what state he is in or what technical way you can listen in on a conversation, for an example. This plot mechanic eventually pays off in one of the most satisfying conclusions I've ever seen in a show. A lot of the technical creations, almost MacGyver in design, are actually based off real CIA agents' field work. So, Burn Notice is all sunshine rainbows then? Well, no. No show is perfect, and despite seven dedicated seasons, Burn Notice does have a problem or two up its sleeves. The primary issue with Burn Notice is, well, the Burn Notice. Michael's vengeance and vendetta to find out who burned him spans, really, the majority of the show. Eventually, each season becomes a different boss for Michael to overthrow. It can get a bit murky, perhaps even confusing. It's hard to stress this as a problem because while it is the show's focal point, helping people is what the show does so damn well. But yeah, the show can get murky, perhaps even convoluted in its overarching storyline. Michael's development through the seasons is really the saving grace for the show when it does get murky. Of course, the humor, the stakes, the characters you grow attached to are all great. But what gets really interesting is to see Michael slide down that slippery slope. I want my brother out of jail. I want answers. I have given up everything. Look at this place. I have he eventually does things in Season 3, Season 4, and so on that Season 1 Michael might have not done. I need someone to go stay over my mom's just until I figure out what's going on. I wouldn't ask unless it was serious. I won't have to let some bureaucrat decide what's worth fighting for. I can do what I think is right. And Mike, what happens when somebody gets in your way, huh? You still love Michael, but it's those painful, regretful decisions he makes that makes his character not only interesting, but grow. And I've said this time and time again, but I'll say it officially. One-on-one, -on -one, fight, character development, intrigue, what have you, I'll take Michael Weston over Jack Bauer. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You know what? Screw it. I said it. I don't regret it. It's over. This is over! Jack Bauer is a great character. He might even be the best or one of the best action television heroes ever. However, once unhinged, he never really went back. That's not to say his character was incapable of change, but I always felt Jack Bauer was at six gear. There's no lawyer. It's just you and me. When your daughter is infected, I'm going to make you. Michael's buildup over the seasons is as good, if not better. Michael's training allows him to be more subdued, but thanks in part to his rough childhood, he isn't without emotional obstructions. In fact, seeing some of his emotional outbursts is when you realize, oh man, they pushed him way too far. And just forget the past. Fiona is not my past.
Michael never really goes homicidal maniac like Jack does. It's more restrained and maybe a bit more realistic, but when he does... It's just not a tough call. Killing Carlos does not solve my problem. Burn Notice is worth watching because it finds that balance. The show's scenic location of Miami is light and airy, but oftentimes the subject material isn't. It can be a heavy show, but never weighs on you like it is. Uh, it's Black George Clooney, guy with a chin. Right, the four of us. The show can earn a smile on your face, but it isn't cheapening to what's actually going on. The balance and blend is so hard to do, but the writers just get it. If you're hot for a new show to watch, Burn Notice has to be on your list.